Aldo Valley Podcast, the number one Kenyan music podcast. Mambo Vipi, everyone. Welcome to Aldo Valley Podcast. You're tuned in to the Kenyan number one music podcast. You already know that by now. My name is Pesh and this is season five. Mambo Vipi, everyone. Karibu to Aldo Valley Podcast. I'm your host, Kare. Hapo sawa kare last time tulipata na Valentine's Day. Aha ilikuwa ile bamba yako ile bamba. Yeah yangu ni mambo pia ilikuwa tu sawa. Yeah so today we have a new episode for you and we have a guest in studio so tacha dichambulisha tuambieni nani na anafanya nini. Uh what's good fam? Uh Michael the CJ uh artist. Hapo sawa Michael the CJ is not alone today he came with a friend. Yeah, asalimiane. Uh, Selector Flawless ukipenda, Ali ukipenda. <laughs> eh. Karibuni guys. Eh, yeah, karibuni sana. Okay, so yeah, we hanging out with Michael Jesse J. Kwanza tuongelele some of the projects you've released before. Nimeona you have like three um these albums out. An album, a mixtape and a sequel. Okay, so um also in that Miona there's how you're naming your projects but before you get into that how has the reception of those three of your previous projects been like from my perspective i'd say uh, the reception has been positive for me for everyone success is different success for someone else would be the numbers success for someone else would be the amount of money is getting off the projects but for me i believe that words are powerful so for me my music has always been about speaking into someone's life and from the previous project i get dms for guys actually telling me like yo this project was really nice i like this particular song so for me like that success for me like for me once i have that i feel like i'm comfortable so i'd say for me the reception has been very positive and i'm glad okay so let's talk about your new album back in black yeah, yeah. it has a deeper meaning you're talking about how as people we assume that so and you, you make it you have to copy the western culture the western vibe can you tell us about that yeah sure so uh, if there's one thing sorry to say and uh, i'm not I'm not doing any jobs or anything but if there's one thing that we as africans or we as the black we really specialize in is mimicking we like picking up a lot from what we see or what we hear and uh, sometimes what we hear isn't the law but we make it the law because we mimic it and we try to bring it so with this project uh, when you look at the cover it's there's a figure it's a face of the persona which is i wrapped around with a white bandage. white bandage so the white bandage is a representation of the white ways and the beliefs we okay. intertwine ourselves in so uh If there's one thing I've always believed in is finding one's purpose. And the moment you have your purpose, I believe that there's no way you could go and start mimicking other styles or other ways of life. So that's one thing guys don't really do is finding the purpose. And once you have your purpose, I'm sure you stick by it and act by it. So with the project, I'm just trying to drain away the false beliefs guys have and encourage artists and more than artists this we as a black man to find a purpose in whatever it is you're doing and sticking by it because once you have your purpose you can't be swayed by it it's the same way uh like uh, <laughs> when you go to the beach uh, the sand at the beach is free yeah, yeah? yeah but the moment you'll want to take that sand and take it to like a playground somewhere you're gonna have to pay for it yeah when you go to the beach you're focused on the water not the sand but the moment you have that sand on a playground when the kids come they want to go there because of the sand they want to build sand castles and yeah. so like the sand has its purpose then so when you find your purpose people see value in you but the moment you're just mimicking guys are gonna be focused on the water yeah cuz they want to ride waves and such things yeah Yeah. So um this western culture that you've used the white bandages to showcase as an artist yani because you, you, I believe you're speaking to artists or are you generally speaking to everyone because of western culture ni mingi kwa watu wanasema about how we copy dress codes how we copy their modes of eating like as african women we want to keep getting slimmer you know all of that people are hooked on to drugs and everything like you know is 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 there like a specific culture that you have really looked honestly yeah. Uh, I didn't have a I'm not only talking to artists in the project uh, cuz I'm talking of the black man not the black artist. artist. Yeah so and there's many cultures but if there's one thing like I really see with our generation right now is uh we are so indulged in drug use 
from the videos you see like guys wanna see Lil Wayne yeah. guys wanna see all these guys and they wanna copy that like they copy the music they copy other things but they also take away the bad things they do yeah. and since for them that's the the guy they wanna mimic it's good but in real sense it's something harmful to us as the black man and generally as beings in the world and I'm spiritually rich and that's something I'm proud of so uh <laughs> even in the context of the bible like it's not really right in the eyes of the lord and yeah so that's one thing i'd really like guys to really move away from yeah mecha kikoi album you have 10 tracks na pia ume collabo na wase different kina stefa po kina jacqueo kina shalin so how was it working with them cuz ina nikalia fun i'd like to know your experience my experience working on the project with all this artists from different backgrounds first of all it was fun because as i've said they're from different backgrounds like with Steph, Steph right now is mainstream yeah. but i'm sure there are so many guys who don't know charlene there are so many guys who don't know maggie k mm-hmm. you know like so working with them was fun because i got a feel of how it feels to work with a mainstream artist yeah. i got the feel of how it feels to work with an underground artist and one thing i came to realize like no matter whether they are mainstream or underground they all bring 100 to the table so guys really look away from this underground artist because they are looking for something else so they chase on the mainstream artists but at the end of the day they both have the same to offer if not better i like the aspect of balancing like all your projects for sababu pia if you don't belong don't belong there are females on it uh, also on uh, yeah can dance yeah so now also on this project you have like magic na shaliji na mimi nimesikiza magic pia nimesikiza shaliji but uh, nimi wa discover through them doing covers what exactly did you see in both of them because they have one like their music out like projects mtu amefanya zake yeye mwenyewe akatoa first things first you say you like the balance and that's one thing i usually really focus on and ali will tell you like because when i'm working on my project like before i start working on a project i angle how i'm going to approach it first and when i'm picking out my collaboration i like when i have that balance because one thing i really believe in is women empowerment also like i believe you know like in the industry like guys <laughs> in the industry guys guys want to make the industry a male thing or guys want to believe like we only have male rappers or, yeah. but in real sense like there are a lot of females out here who are really putting in work but guys don't pay attention to them that's why you see them go and decide they'll just do covers until they get so before i do my project i do a lot of research with the guys around me i have uh another friend of mine in the team is called Mash we do a lot of research before we start actually working on the project and the research includes like looking for the features we are going to work with so that means we go to all these platform town cloud everything we try and listen to guys can ask Stacy that's how Stacy also I knew her through covers she didn't have a body of work out yeah. but from what i had i could tell what she could bring to the table potential yeah so i do the research based on the potential that lies behind the female artists also as much as i look at the male artists wow <laughs> i think i'm getting really impressed today <laughs> but also um i like the fact that you've said you like um about women empowerment and you know and like really strengthening the woman in the industry in the industry i feel like Uh, ladies uh, week mm-hmm. in the street wow and um let's talk about your collab with Steph Capella what is the track is called the bag uh oh, back, 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 back talk, talk. Yeah. what's the track all about what's the inspiration behind it uh when you listen to the lyrics i start by i'm god cheap but i know you see the god in me so like first of all like if there's something artists really take away from music like artists usually feel like they're ashamed to talk about god in their music because nobody would listen to it uh, true it's the second track on my album yeah. after the intro an intro is a, is a tribute to the late Kobe Bryant who just passed yeah. i felt like it was only right because if i'm speaking about the black culture it wouldn't be right for me to just give a blind eye to that it happened in between the project so i had to incorporate okay. doing that and bug talk comes as the second track and My first line is I'm good cheap like I really want guys to know like I'm working with the Lord yeah you know like to encourage all these artists who are afraid of putting God in their lyrics to actually come and do them 
when you listen to Capella he's like hatubishani ni nani hana bibi hatafika mashambani ni nani hana cv like we are just talking about things that guys experience in life we are talking about things that people go through and that's one thing i really like focusing on when i'm working on my music my music is really what i feel what i'm actually going through not what i'm seeing not what i'm wearing sometimes you throw in those walks in the span once in a while to make also these other guys relate to you but i just stick to the script what's happening in my life yeah. what i'm seeing going on around me uh now back to you shali g na magike you know both of them they have them good vocals like ish yeah. sim chezo yeah. sim chezo na I, i'm just guessing that b- both their tracks are more on the r&b you know love side I, is that true yeah true uh and i don't know but i usually feel like most of the time when you're incorporating a female they usually bring that aspect of music mm-hmm. and uh, yeah so you also have to speak on it because it's things that we experience especially as youth we experience love in our life so mm-hmm. if you don't talk about it it won't be spoken of and uh, it's not right to let that things go because these are things guys can really relate you know so when you speak on them guys actually relate to things that you're talking about and the best way to bring it out is incorporating a female because with love yeah. it involves like oh, two According to the Bible it's a woman. <laughs> <laughs> it's a woman and a man so yeah. the best way to bring it out is incorporating the female voice yeah. so that she could bring it in in the most exact and most raw way. Yeah. And because when you're singing your verse it feels like you're answering to what she's saying. Yeah. You know if it was a guy it would yeah, feel like yeah. a, uh, no know, homo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're trying to you, you, you try to really keen on the lyrics yeah. And, yeah. but the fact that it's a female singing the first verse or the second verse and she's talking about love when I'm versing I feel like I'm writing to her. Yeah. So it's very raw, it's very authentic, it's yes. very organic. Yeah. And finally um cuz um you have like five collabs on the track. You have featured Nene K twice and also there's a track you featured Nene K and Jack Jack Will from Major Beat a lot. How did you get Jack on? <laughs> uh, actually I'd, I'd say like that was the most fun track to record cuz uh we were we were actually in the same space. These are two guys that have actually come met and interacted with that I feel like we are in the same space of seeing same space of thinking so working on the track was easy and fun and uh, i managed to get jack on the track uh, through nene as i was recording uh, he played me a couple of the songs and listening to him like honestly i'd say no offense to anyone but jack jack honestly i feel like he's the baddest rapper I've worked with hey, so hey, far because yeah. the verse he brought onto the table like for once I felt sheesh, <laughs> sheesh, <girl. laughs> sheesh. Chill, is it your song is it your song you know uh, with Nene uh, he has a couple of co- collaborations because uh, apart from the collaborations he was doing NR for the project and uh, with Nene since we met from the jump we've always seen eye to eye because we're in the same space of thinking same space of everything So working with him on more than one track was very simple and what he brings to the table is also everyone can see for him or herself yeah okay, so I'd like to know how you write your songs like what inspires you how do you just sit down and come up with a line at a young niggas in my space like they're astronauts how do you just come up with such dope lines uh, I wouldn't take all the credit at times I'd say it's talent and talent is God given so at times you're in a space and as much as you're being inspired by the physical and the things going on around you there's also the spiritual realm which comes in like sometimes you're seated and you get inspiration from the Bible from many things you know so with this punchline it's just a matter of how consistent you are how hard you are because Also as an artist if you don't have consistency you don't have the buzz. Mm. Like if you look at it like if you don't have consistency you can't build on. If I had this sick bar on this project if I'm trying to be consistent I'll be like how can I beat this bar? Mm. You know and that's how you get inspired because you want to give a bar that was better than this bar on the other project. So you are thinking twice as much as you thought on the previous project. Mm. Uh, and most of the bars are just inspired by things that i see things that go on around me because as you say like 
like I've told you the first bar to the song of Capella, I'm God Chief, but I know it's the God in me. Like it's fact, but it's a bar. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like bar. yeah, That's but it's just fact. Yeah. yeah. So there's no yeah. trick. You can't go and grab a trick. You can't even touch any part of talent. You also uh, the trick behind it is not on the bar. It's when now you're creating the rhyme. Mm. You have to look at a certain way of rhyme. There are certain ways you end certain verses that lead you to how you're gonna start with the next one mm. to create that consistency in delivery. And uh, when you're writing a song, do you just sit down and write? Ama there's a time maybe you're working out. Alafu na kujap na line. So you note it somewhere. Alafu when you're when you're saying it, you like ama you just sit down and one like an inch ama. If someone tells you they sit down and write it like an inch, <laughs> that's a lie. Because that's forced. That's forced. Yeah. I could tell you for free. Sometimes I'm even in a job and there's really loud music that's really distracting. But I come up with a bar and I pull out my phone and I try. <laughs> record it like I shout so that you get the distraction but the buzz is it's inspired it's inspired so maybe you see something and out of what you've seen something comes to mind so sometimes you're, you're in town you're walking you come up with a bar at times you're eating you come up with a bar at times you're asleep and when you wake up to maybe go get water a bar comes and you have to rush and look for your phone and just oh. nod it down somewhere and then now after you have those things is when now you can sit down and actually construct of us. Okay, now also I've worked with like six producers on the track. There's Malu, there's Veri, Kuna Overkill, Ni Overkill. The Overkill up on that track Pia. Na, yeah, she the Busa. He's the baddest beat producer out of Toronto. He hits a million views on beats. Uh-huh. <laughs> beats alone. Beats, like just a beat. And I've, I've actually never seen that till okay. yeah. uh, I interacted with him and it was really mind-blowing. So... Yeah. Yeah, so I'm I'm just guessing that um working with all of them this just like how you plan to bring out different styles in the project. So who 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 did what? Who did the hard track? Who did the love songs? Who did, you know, the soul vibes? Who did who did what on the track on the album? I'd say uh Vieri and she did the bar for bar tracks cuz uh she'd coming out of toronto like if you look at the toronto raptors jake uh tori lens they have a certain style of delivery that's bars 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 uh vieri is a producer i started my journey with vieri yeah. and in the beginning vieri could send me like 10 beats and out of the 10 beats i'd like go with one, one. <laughs> i don't know if you're so mad about it but he kept on he kept on and right now vieri would send me five beats and i'd pick all the five beats like growth with the uh, overkill Overkill, we met in a very funny way. He reached out and he told me he really appreciates my music and he'd love for us to work together. And when we interacted, it was organic from the jump and he really played a major role in the project because with Overkill, he has like three beats on the tape. And even after, right now, we are angling with him on how we are approaching the next project. Like right now, he's part of the family. You know, like, yeah. Back to the music styles, because they, they had to, like, patia, zipatia genre, like, like R&B, like soul, trap soul, all of that, zipatia, the, the different genres on the album. Uh, if I gave each track a genre, yeah. I feel like I'd be lying, because I usually try and really bring out a unique way of delivery. But I'd say there's R&B in there, there's some pop in there. We have some West African vibes. Uh, we have hard hip hop in there. But I really don't box my tracks to a particular genre because when the audience listens to it, every person would give you their opinion and most of the time you'd find they're not the same, they're varying. This person would tell you this is a pop sound. Another person would tell you this is an R&B sound. And I usually really enjoy it when it comes to that because I'm happy like guys can't even box me to one genre and that's why for me I'd say I'm an artist and I wouldn't say I'm a rapper or I'm a singer or I'm a, I'd say I'm an artist yeah I like that. I like that. yeah so from your back in black album which is actually nice I like it uh what are your expectations honestly my biggest expectation is to just get better like I really hope that guys could listen to it and say this guy has really grown from the previous project. I've never been the type of art- artist to 
have expectation on numbers or uh, figures and stuff because most of the time uh, as human beings not even as artists alone our expectations are what break us or make us so you'd rather go to a certain place without an expectation such that if it happens it's a blessing more than a curse because if you have that expectation if you don't meet it, it becomes a curse True. Yeah. you go with an open mind you have to be open minded so that if the numbers skyrocket you're like thanks god like yo i'm blessed you know like not i'm expecting at least 10k views and then i hit 1k i'm like hey. you know like, so most of the time as artists our expectations are what break us and i do really like people out there to know like views are in success true views are in success so just work on your craft and focus on the artistry more than this other side enjoy what you do enjoy what you do yeah there's a bonus track on the album as well Puerto Rico you know <laughs> there's videos out for this track as well but um, why didn't it make it to know like your previous projects uh when working on projects I usually as I've said when I do my research so after the research when you put together beats and everything there's a certain tempo there's certain topics in the project there's certain ways of delivery with Puerto Rico like with my previous projects if I actually put in the track on any of my previous project I feel like it would be forced than organic because it doesn't actually have uh, the vibe to any of my previous projects yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah it was a different vibe so that would be forced and I'd just be lying to my audience yeah <laughs> Now nah, also to smami tu hapo kwa Puerto Rico cuz you say a lot of things in that track you have to get onto the part where you say when when do I'm a fake MCs lazima to do is easy jobs zina to show kina dali ah there's a bar that i say lakini mimi ni dog for these fake MCs yeah. Yeah. like i know so many people i'm not going to mention names but i know so many people who switch styles or who switch their delivery ways yeah. so that they could remain relevant to the Kenyan industry and uh, going back to the beginning I said like with music it's all about your purpose and most of these guys I feel like for them they are, tra- they are rather at peace with the world and at war with themselves than being at I peace with yourself and at war with the world and I feel <laughs> as an artist that's <laughs> what should be your biggest takeaway yeah. like it's better for me to be at peace with myself but at war with the world because conforming to you know like most of these artists have conformed to the standards of the world like because for the world success is numbers success is the number of shows you're getting success is let's say the money you're getting from the project success is how much clout you have yeah and funny thing like when you when you really do your research and look at it in real sense most of these artists they're not even getting for the shows they are rapping about they're speaking on So like I feel like the fact that guys just want to base their success to what the world is putting as the standard and it's so sad because right now especially in the Kenyan industry the standards have shifted such that mediocre has become mm-hmm. standard you know yeah. like mwenye anaemba matope mingi ndo mwenye ako relevant and I'm not ashamed to say that because guys are singing not everyone but there are guys Shit. who are actually not putting together art uh, like music <laughs> It's sad but music is losing its art form and guys are focusing on competition and business and music is all about art because you call yourself an artist but there's no art in it so yeah. I think I don't know I think back back in black evoked something in you like when you were writing back in black it really I just feel like it did because listening to like a project like if you don't belong you don't belong and appear listening to Puerto Rico this this just how this this vibe you know this whole different vibe that I don't think is on on back on black also on Puerto Rico when you nasemanga ukisema like you we should drop like nasty C may think I think they may change like yeah. back in black really did evoke evoke something in you Yeah, like I wouldn't say back in black was what evoked something in me. It's uh, what I went through in a certain time period before the project, like the things I saw, the things I went through, the people I interacted with. Through that, I was able to look at things from a different perspective. Time, there's a line on Puerto Rico I say, 
uh, and I hope someday I rap like Nasty C or with Nasty C it's gonna be Nasty C. <laughs> like, I do respect the artist right now, but right now um, if you ask me someone I wish to feature it, I wouldn't say it's Nasty C because there's growth. Yeah. And the moment as an artist you can't listen to your previous project and say, eh, I feel like I could have done better, then that means there's no growth in you. So there's really nothing much going on and there's really no form of art because with art even drawing like you get better by the day so even when it comes to music you're supposed to be getting better by the day not singing the same thing every day uh and if there's one thing i've really realized like we have artists but most of these art most of these artists these days are actors so they just act the same movies you know like everybody wants to hope on the gangeton wave yeah. like like i know of an artist who's really big in gangeton and he was a rapper yeah same like he was a rapper <laughs> and right now he's really huge in yeah. yeah. gangeton so like most of this <laughs> most of this artist like hey real quick zero to 100 and then you're like yo what happened man you know, <laughs> i was even gonna collab with you bro <laughs> you know like so most of these rappers right now are just actors and they're acting the same movies yeah. and As an audience also I'm sure you never go to IMAX and go uh, which movie let's say for example the Wakanda movie mm-hmm. Black Black you don't go and like I want to watch Black Panther again you always go there yeah. expecting Fine. something new yeah, yeah so that's the, what I feel is challenging our artists right now Yeah so I feel like you have too much wisdom in this. Yeah. Like to cover to our page like true true and people should listen. Yeah like una fa to hold a stadium with the artist was cool waambie true like now get educated from your father like you're schooling us. So come on get do collab na any msani either ako alive or dead like your favorite artist wange kwa nani? This one. One eh like challenge one and uh, Nipsey Hussle without doubt because <laughs> for me like if there's one person I'd say has always been the blueprint to every artist every man and what every man should angle to become is Nipsey like not only the music not only business even how he handled his powers and everything his, his children how he went around how he carried himself and that was self explanatory because yeah. his respect was not forced but was just earned yeah. Yeah. like when he started he sold an album for a thousand a copy and jay z bought a hundred copies dollars. <laughs> in dollars that's in dollars <laughs> jay z bought a hundred copies so like his respect speaks for itself and rest in peace but it would really be an honor if he was the one feature on any of my tracks wow. no kenyan artist Akuna Kenya with Kenyan artists uh right now uh after Steph Capella had always been the artist I wanted to work with and I'm saying artist yes. I'm not saying rapper or yeah. singer cuz uh before Steph maybe my research is wrong but before Steph I never felt like we've had a complete package artist until he came into the industry cuz the guy can sing he can rap he can rap he can yeah. do spoken word he can do all these things and he doesn't just do them he does them to a certain level yeah. of greatness you know like he doesn't just do them in a mediocre way or for the sake or for the numbers yeah. and from working with him he puts his passion in his craft i've worked with other guys that it's just about yeah. the what the song is gonna bring after it drops you know but with him it's all about passion if i'm talking about female artist uh I'd say Karun. Oh, Karun. Yeah, I'd say Karun. Like, if I could actually do a track here in Kenya with Karun on the hook, as <laughs> my DJ said, Karun on the hook and Capella on the second verse, <laughs> I'm sure like that would be <laughs> madness. <laughs> Maybe, maybe it will come to pass. Who knows? Who knows? Who will be in the mambo when you talk about? Also, um, I realized that the album is not out on any platform at all, other than the track with Shali G, which is available on YouTube. And um, I don't know if if when is the project going to be out here for streaming, downloading, you know, like buying and stuff like that. First of all, apologies because uh, we are behind schedule on the delivery for the project. But it's because of matters that are out of our hands that day. But the team and I are really working around the clock, day in day out, to clear the masters and get the project to the audience, because it's only fair. And uh, 
as you've mentioned the talk that's out of the talk with Charlie Charlie G. Uh about the track I'd really like to say I when we did the track I feel like it's a really 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 great track but it's something that sorry to say but not everyone can consume and understand the greatness behind it and I'd say it's great cuz for starters I'd say Shelly G is really talented considering she's only 17 years of age ah yeah so I'd say it's a really dro- it's a really dope track and guys should go out there and really listen to it cuz If Shali doesn't remind you of Sama Walker, I don't know who you're listening <laughs> to. <laughs> I don't know who you're listening to. Question your choice of no people you're listening to. Yeah, but yeah, I like the lineup and um, everybody that's in, in the, is in the album because the album really seems heavy. I mean, from Steph Capella to Jack to then Kinamagi K and their beautiful voices, the love of the work that each producer has put into the album as well, plus the dope cover art also. Yeah, the dope cover art. Yes, you cannot forget about that as well. Then you know, gonna match, you know. I have merchandise yeah. for every project. Like, I have merchandise, merchandise, but one thing I usually try, I usually try inspire my match with what I'm doing then. So when I work on a project, I usually try and inspire my merchandise also with the projects that I'm doing. It's a way of promotion and it's also a good thing to keep yourself in check so that with that, I could tell myself my projects are good projects because if I can actually incorporate them in clothing, mm. it speaks a lot. Yeah, so what is your highlight moment so far in your music career? Uh, my highlight, I'd say, is right now when I sit down and look at my old projects, I feel like I shouldn't have put them out. And that says one thing, I'm growing in my art. So for me, that's my highlight because it's mine. I wouldn't say my highlight is working with you who or who. Yeah, so my highlight is the growth curve that myself as an artist have been seeing and the guys around me because even most of these beats, I'm sure you'd wonder how I got she to send me a beat. And most of these beats, <laughs> most of these beats, I get them for free. Like, I tell you, like, honestly, there's no beat on that project that I've paid for, even on my previous project. And it's because guys hit you up and they're like, I really uh-huh. like what you're doing. It's because as an artist, I found my purpose before I started my artistry. Yeah. So the moment you have your purpose, guys can actually see the value in your work. Yeah. And with music, I feel like music is like a child. Music is like a baby, you know? Like, that's how you should handle music. Like, at times you're gonna, you'll have first to start to learn how to walk. That's how you learn how to put the words together and everything. Once you have the words, you have to learn uh, fire can burn you. Like, uh, you could get knocked by a car. You have to learn certain things. So, like, these are also learning points in music. One thing guys should understand, like, they should be learning in as much as there's fun and there's artistry in it. You should be learning to it. Your music should speak to other people and, and your life in person. Because, as I've said, like, I've usually... I've always believed that words have power. True. So even these guys who are singing things that don't speak into people's life or speak into people's lives the wrong way, it's not right because words have power. You know, like if I tell you right now, <laughs> if right now I sing and I tell you uh, I have a gun, all I do is move around and kill people. <laughs> and there's somebody who looks up to me. Yeah. Those people are going to want to do that. That's why, yeah. guys, that's why guys are mimicking. Like guys would see... Lil Wayne and they don't sing in that style. Guys see somebody do out it and because they're mimicking, they're looking up to someone. So even us as artists, I feel like we have a very big obligation in what we do because there are guys out there, no matter if you're upcoming or what, there's always someone looking up to you. So what you put out really speaks a lot. So you should also be cautious about what you're putting out. You shouldn't just put out content for the sake. You should put out content knowing it speaks to people knowing it affects certain people and there's a time uh, I was in Rongai we were having a session at the studio at Steph Capella Records uh, he works with Ivan yeah. Ivan Odi so we had gone to get food in some restaurant in the restaurant there's this lady with her child I'll come back to counter and the small girl was singing Lamba Lolo Lamba you know and she looked like she was between four and five And you know, like, <laughs> that child from singing that, with time she's gonna want to know what it means. Yeah. What it means. After she finds out what it means, she's gonna want to practice it. 
you know. <laughs> so as artists, we are curiosity. speaking. <laughs> yeah, curiosity. So as artists, we are really speaking into people's lives. So let's just also be honest with people and put out content that really impacts people in positive ways. It's not just about you yourself. It's about what comes through you. Like if you're an artist, that form of art, the form of art is a talent and it's God given. And God gives you. It's not for you, but it's through you. What it can do through you, you know. Oh. <laughs> and at the end of the day, uh, you're gonna get judged for it. I'm not trying to say this to scare anyone, but yeah. you're gonna get judged for. Oh. Yeah, like we are like teachers, and the Bible tells us teachers and those guys are the ones who are gonna be judged actually because they are the ones who are leading. So we also like as an artist, you, all, you should also know you're speaking to people's lives. So. What you speak is what people do. So speak things that you'd be happy to see someone doing. And do you have a favorite track in your album? Uh, I, I really, <laughs> I really enjoyed recording the outro, uh, and I recorded it in like under five minutes. Uh, and it was so fun for me. So I feel like I'd say I think that's my favorite track because even the bars on it, especially my second verse. Eh, I okay. Got, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the second verse starts like I know my present is a present to the present. I'm the best rapper in Africa for real. I'm of the essence. Okay. You know, like even the delivery on it, I feel like I stepped up a bit. So I feel yeah. like it's my favorite track. But on collaboration. Uh, mm-hmm. I think <laughs> my collaboration would say Charlene's jam was my favorite because it was mind blowing for me with her age and what she could bring to the table. Yeah. And even not only my track, I've heard a couple of her other songs with the talent she has. I feel like she really has a lot coming up for her, and yeah. You guys should really pay attention to what she has and watch her face. Wow, I hope that you have been, I don't know, mind blown. To me, I'm just feeling like I'm so blown away. Like, yeah. you know, it's beautiful. I think it is to really discover your purpose and what it is that you're here to do and exactly what you want to do with your artistry. So, yeah, where can people find you on social media and, uh, you know, maybe your previous projects and where maybe this project is going to drop on? Uh, across all social media platforms at Michael Jesse J. Previous projects, you can find them on iTunes, Spotify, Tidal, iHeartRadio. It's out there for guys who want to stream and listen to it. Yeah, and uh, as I drop new projects, my old projects are going to be coming to YouTube. So if you if you don't want to go out your way to look for them, you can be patient and wait for them to drop. But maybe your patience won't fail. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so thank you so much for joining us. I've really had a great time. I've really, you know, interacted with a different person today. I'm a joke. Sure, You're speaking to people. Like, when I want to to find their purpose. It's not about just music. Na in your studio, na kuimba. Yeah, like you're speaking to someone. Yeah, na penda your part. Yeah, so thank you so much for joining us. And of course, um, do stay um, Kairada for this project because it's going to drop soon, Cynthia. Yeah, it's going to drop real soon and it's really heavy. So just keep your ears out, <laughs> keep your eyes out, just keep watching. Like it's a really dope project. Yeah. Yeah, for sour. So remember to keep on tuning to Ado Valley Podcast. It is available each and every Friday. And of course, remember to interact with us via our official hashtag, hashtag Ado Valley Podcast. Kari watu wa kupate wapi kwenye social media? Uh, Twitter, I'm funny, but uh, at Wangare Gikonyo. Instagram, same, Wangare Gikonyo. Yeah, and that's him. Not find me on Twitter, at Penina101, and on Instagram, at Penina underscore one zero. On for Adoveli, you can pata at Adoveli Radio on Twitter and at Adoveli on Instagram. Remember, do enjoy your weekend. Do not drink and drive. Support the good Kenyan music. And so by the merchandise as well. Look at my south, look at I'm getting I'm getting extra. So I blood to kafunge. Uh at one yeah, at one mahali. What you oh and is ampata on social media. Ali, pole, pole sana. On Twitter Okach at Okach Alista. On Instagram Okach. Yeah, so yeah, as Ali said, Ali ni DJ. What? Uh, Michael JCJ. So we see you guys next time on a new episode. Adolf Podcast, the number one Kenyan music podcast.